spring which we have done earlier uh, it is written by an author called as Miss Yu. Pay attention because we don't have time for revision. And in this part also, like the chapter Memories of Childhood, here also we have got two stories. But written by the same writer, that is Miss Yu. The first part of the chapter is about a boy, a small boy, called as Sahebe Alam. And the second part is about another boy who is called as Mukesh, isn't it? Now, Sahib Alam, he, along with his family members, migrated from Dhaka in the year 1971. Okay? In Dhaka, when they were living, they had their own home, they had their own lands, own crops. They were self-sufficient. But unfortunately, a storm came and their house, their crops, everything was destroyed. As a result, they had no food, no job, no work. So, Sahib's family migrated from Dhaka to India. Now, remember that Sahib is just a representative. There are so many other boys, there are so many other families who migrated from Dhaka or who migrated from other places to India. Why they came? In search of work, in search of food. Okay? So, Sahib is also one such boy. And this baby, Miss Yu, she travels around our country and by traveling she had seen so many children of this type. And basically the chapter is about child labor which is there in our country which is there in so many parts of the world okay that is highlighted and we all know that education is compulsory free education is there for whom for the children of which age is 6 to 14 but in the chapter we have seen that this boys this children they are deprived of education okay now come to the side so he migrated from Dhaka and after migrating from Dhaka, Sahib along with his family, they settled in a place which is near to Delhi and that place is called as Simapuri. Okay, so Simapuri is very very close to Delhi. But if you visit Delhi and if you visit Simapuri, you will be able to find a lot of difference. Delhi is the capital. The living standard of people is very high. Whereas in Simapuri, if you visit, you will find that mostly the place is occupied by whom? It is occupied by the rag pickers. If you want to live in Simapuri, then you have to become a rag picker. I'll not go into every detail because this is a quick revision. Okay? So Sahib settled in Simapuri. And what he used to do? Early morning, he used to get up and he used to take the sack or that gummy bag over his shoulder along with his friends and he will move out for what in search of in search of gold now what is that gold does he really find gold no he finds sometimes he finds the shiny coins one rupee coin sometimes he finds. not always so when he found one day the excitement started the hope began and he thought that he will get regularly. So, boys like Sahib used to go early in the morning to the garbage dumps in search of money, in search of coins. Okay? Now, these you have told us that for these boys like Sahib, rag picking is it a business? No, it's a fun for them. The garbage is gold for them. The garbage is a gift for them. When they search, the garbage, what they find, they find the coins. But is it the same thing for the parents? No. For parents, it's a means of survival. If there is no garbage, if they don't go for rag picking, then they will not be able to survive. Because of rag picking, they are able to manage a roof. We have seen all those things when we were doing the chapter. Because of this rag picking, they are able to get food. So whatever they have, it's all because of the red picking. Okay? But for children, it's different.
For children, rag picking is a fun. It's a fun-filled activity. Garbage, it's a gift for them. They open it, they search, they look for it. What they find there inside, they find the coins. Now this, boys, they usually they don't wear shoes or slippers. And we know the story that when Nis Yung, she asked one of them, what did they say? That they are comfortable without wearing shoes or slippers. Some of them, they say that it's like a tradition. But is it a tradition? No, actually it's not a tradition. They are actually hiding their poverty. Okay. So this is the plight. This is the condition of the children in our country as well as in many other places. The age in which they should go to school, the age in which they should study, they should gather knowledge. In that age, unfortunately, they are doing this type of things. Okay. They should go to school. They should study because uh, the title of the chapter is what? Lost Spring. And spring here refers to what? Childhood. Lost childhood. We all know that childhood is the best period of our life. We don't have any responsibility. We are carefree. Life is very nice, very smooth. We don't have much responsibility. So this is the spring of our life. And at this stage, we can learn very fast. We can grasp things very fast. But again, unfortunately, these children, their spring is lost. Their childhood is lost. Why the childhood is lost? Just now I have said because they are not able to go to school. Okay? They are laborers. Child labor. What is the cause of child labor? I have given there. Okay? So this is the condition of the children living in Simapur especially. They are living there because they are getting food there. Is their living condition nice? No. It's a slum area. They don't have proper houses. They don't have proper uh, drinking water. There, are, there is no proper drainage facility. Nothing is there. But still they are living there. Because they are getting food there. Do they have any identity cards? You know that. They don't have. But still they are living there. Why? Because they have their ration cards. And because of their ration card, they are able to cast their vote. Okay, so that is why they are living in Simapuri. We have also seen that at the end of this part, the first part, Nisium, the author, tells us that this boy Sahibi Allah, finally he gets a job. Where did he get the job? In a tea store. Okay, with a handsome salary. What was his salary? 800. Imagine a boy who goes for rag picking or who goes to the garbage the dumps just for one point. That boy is getting a salary of 800 rupees. It's like 8,000 for him. Okay? It's a huge amount for a boy. But interestingly, even after getting so much of money, plus his food is also free, I guess. Remember? You should know the chapter better because we have done all these things. So his food is free. He's getting a salary of 800. But even after that, he is happy or not? No. No. What is the cause of his unhappiness? He is getting money. He has money now. He has food now. But he has lost a very, very precious thing. That is his liberty, his freedom. The way he used to move around with his friends earlier, can he do this after getting the job in the tea stall? No. Is the tea stall job very tough? No. Just he has to take the canister, if you remember. That steel canister he has to take and he will have to go to the milk booth and collect milk and give it to the manager of the tea store. That's all. But still he is not happy. Because he has lost his freedom. As the writer says, the canister is not his. But the bag which he used to carry over his shoulder, it was his. He used to enjoy that. But this job, he is not enjoying it. So children, may, this is just an example. Sahib is, is just a representative as I say. There are so many other children in this world, in our country, who are doing this kind of thing, but they are not happy. They are doing just for survival, they are doing. But this Sahib story is completely different to the story of the other character that is Mukesh. Mukesh is totally different. But her. Sahib and Mukesh, both of them, they are poor. 
isn't it? Both of them they are poor. They are not rich. Mukesh belongs to the family of a bangle maker. We all know that. He lives in Firozabad. His in his family everybody is engaged in bangle making. His parents, grandparents, their parents, everybody. Making bangles or bangle making is a gift for them. They respect it. But by making bangles or by selling bangles, are they earning huge money? No. Sometimes they don't ha even have food to eat. But still they continue. Why? Because they consider it as their caste. They feel that they are born in that caste. They feel that it is God-given gift for them. They cannot break the tradition. If you remember, there is a line, no? can a God-given lineage be broken? Okay, so they cannot break the tradition. They think in that way. But among all these people, there is this child who is different. He's different from all. He's different from Sahib. How is he different? First, how is he different? He has got a dream. That is the best answer. He has got a dream. He has got the aim. Did Sahib has had any aim? Sahib had no aim. He was used to be a rag picker, then finally, luckily, unluckily, whatever, he got that job in the tea stall. That's all. But this boy is not like that. He has got an aim, and his aim is to be a motor mechanic. Although he is born in the family of bangle maker, although 24 hours he sees bangles around him, although all the time he sees his parents, grandparents busy in making bangles, but he is not into all these things. He don't want. He wants to be a motor mechanic. Is that so easy to become a motor mechanic? In Firozabad, it's very tough. Because society will not allow him. His parents won't allow him. But still, he has that fighting spirit in him. Remember, if you remember, in the last part of the chapter, the writer asks, no? how will you learn? How will you become a motor mechanic? Garage is far away. He said what? I'll work. He's ready to work hard for his dreams. Isn't it? So, this is the difference between Mukesh and Sahib. Sahib didn't have any aim, but this boy, he had the aim. We don't know whether he will be successful in becoming a motor mechanic or not. Because in the chapter, Nisiu says us that the society is very tough. There are the middlemen. Who were the middlemen? Remind me first. Bureaucrats, shahukars, moneylenders, policemen. So many are there. And these people won't allow them because these people are doing what? They are taking money from the bangle makers. So they will not allow these children. Children means boys like Mukesh. They will not allow them to move out of Firozabad to do some other business. Because they are getting benefit from them. And Mukesh, if he wants to become a motor mechanic, if he wants to do something new, he will have to face the society. Lots of challenges are there in his path. But still he is ready to work. But Sahib, he was not like that. That's why what happened to him? He got the job, he is getting good salary, but still his satisfaction is not there. Happiness is not there. But Mukesh is not ready to surrender. Just like remember Zitkala says, she is not ready to surrender. Mukesh is also not ready to surrender. He will work hard. What will happen in the future? We don't know. Or we don't know. But he is ready. He don't want to become a uh, pilot. Remember the la last part? Why? Because he might not have seen an aeroplane. Few aeroplanes fly over fields about the last land. Okay? But he has got no regret. He is happy. He is satisfied. He is content to dream about becoming a motor mechanic. So, child labor, we can see clearly in this chapter, Law Spring. One is Sahib, another one is Mukesh, and so many other children. If you move to the cities, if you go to the metros, you will find so many this type of children. In the road, you will find them selling balloons, selling flowers, cleaning your cars. These are real things. It's not something which we are reading only in the textbook. No, this is reality of life. You'll find plenty. In our places, you may not find that much. When you go to the cities, you'll find lots, lots. You'll feel bad for them. Then you will understand what is the importance of education. We are lucky that we are getting education. 
there are so many so many thousands and thousands of children who are not lucky to get this facility of studying in a school and their parents are also helpless some of the parents are not even aware that there is this facility of free education some of the parents are aware but still they cannot send the children to school why they want to engage the children in work so that they can earn extra money just like you remember and handle told to france remember or not france did not blame the children france blamed whom himself as well as the parents same here connect connect whenever you write answers now you connect the chapters there are so many scope which you can connect it so these parents they are helpless that's why i say they are helpless some of them are not even aware those who are aware still they cannot send the children to school because of their condition financial that's why i said economic pressure okay so the life of these children is pathetic very very sad that's why we lost spring isn't it so when you are preparing for exam you have to read line by line are you ready hmm? line by line and in this chapter you will find poetic devices the most important poetic device is which one hyperbole what is hyperbole exaggeration 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 means what speaking too much okay garbage for them is gold where is garbage and where is gold but garbage is presented as if it is like gold unimportant thing insignificant thing is presented as if it is very very important okay so when you are preparing for exam you have to study in detail you have to study each and every and each and every paragraph because questions come from the paragraph they will give you a paragraph they will give you questions you know the pattern question patterns they will ask the word meanings all right so study properly this one and this chapter is very very important questions come always there is i don't think in any particular year question didn't come from this chapter came because a very very important chapter right read read yourself